Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Upcom Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So according to DBZ Space, both the Tech Trunks as well as the AGL Zamasu are dropping on Global tonight at 10.30pm Pacific Standard Time, which for me is more like 1.30am the next morning, but either way, they're both very, very close. And in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a quick little breakdown and preview of both of the units, as well as look at their banners and their super attack animations, and then we'll end off the video with a little recommendation from me about what I think you guys should do with your stones as far as these units are concerned. And obviously, everything I say in this video is my own personal opinion, so um, you guys are totally free to disagree with me. And if that's okay with you, then keep watching, and without further ado, let's jump into it. So, like I said, both these guys are coming tonight at 10.30pm Pacific Standard Time, but we're also getting a token awakening for the Int Mai, right here, and also a brand new Gawasu that token awakens into a Gawasu and Zamasu, and this is a summonable unit. He'll be available on an upcoming category banner, which is why I'm not going to focus too much on him. He is a pretty good unit, or they are, I guess, a pretty good unit, but um, I don't like to tell people to summon on a uh, category banner, so I feel like just wait for this guy to come back, or just like wait for you to get lucky and just summon him on a random banner in the future, because he's not worth going into a category banner for. And there's also going to be a new duplicate Vegeta that's free to play from the duplicate Vegeta story event, a new free to play STR Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks from the same story event, and uh, that's pretty much it. So there are some other units, but the main focus in today's video is definitely the Trunks and Zamasu. And we're going to jump into it here, starting with the Trunks. So his name is Resilient Will to Protect the Future, Trunks Teen Future. Leader skill is Future Saga Category Key plus 3, HP Attack plus 170%, and Defense plus 130%. So he is a new Future Saga Category Leader. Or Super Class Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 100 and 20%. So not quite a dual category leader, but he's also a super class leader, which means that he's pretty versatile as a leader. He can run, obviously, future Saga category units, and he's the best leader for them at the moment on global, or once he comes out. But you can also include uh, a lot of other units that are just super types if you want to mix it up. So uh, I like that a lot about this guy and the Zamasu we'll talk about in a second. Super attack is shining slash raises attack and causes immense damage. And passive is for this world. Attack and defense plus 100%. Transform when conditions are met. And uh, the transformation conditions are really simple to meet. All you have to do is be or all that needs to happen is for you to be on the third turn from the start of battle and that he will transform. His links are Saiyan, uh, Saiyan Warrior Race, the Saiyan Lineage, Royal Lineage, Messenger from the Future, Dismal Future, Prepare for Battle, and Fierce Battle. Pretty standard for a Future Trunks. And categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Future Saga, Time Travelers, Vegeta's Family, Transformation Boost, Super Saiyans, and Master Student Bond. Now of course this is a JP exclusive thing at the moment because we don't have the Int Future Gohan but uh, all the other categories are on global. So those are all the details for the trunks before he transforms. And then once he transforms, so after the third turn, he'll become Super Saiyan uh, Future Trunks. And obviously the leader skill stays the same. His Gallic, or his Gallic, his super attack is Gallic Gun now. Raises attack and defense infinitely, by the way, which makes him really good for the legendary uh, Goku event, and also Infinite Dragon Ball History, and any other events in the future that allows you to stack for a long time, right? And he also causes immense damage. Uh, passive is for the future, we must protect attack and defense plus 120%, key plus 1 plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% at start of turn, um, up to key plus 4, and attack and defense up to 80%. So in theory, he can get up to, uh, I believe, 200%. I don't think this is calculated separately, so yeah, I think you just added up 200% attack and defense, and also an additional 4 key. And his active skill is Miraculous Power, which can be activated um, literally the next turn he comes back after transformation. So after the third turn, he'll transform, and then the turn he comes back after that, you can use the active skill to transform once again. It's your call though, because a lot of people like to keep him in just this form since he does stack infinitely and he doesn't do that when he transforms but he does hit a lot harder after his active skill transformation so uh let's see 
two links change, he gets Super Saiyan and Golden Warrior. Uh, obviously, categories stay the same. And that's all you need to know about this Super Saiyan Trunks. And then finally, his powered up form after the active skill uh, will give him the Super Attack Final Hope Slash, which causes immense damage and massively lowers the enemy's defense. And his passive is attack plus 30% and defense plus 10% per key sphere obtained. Attacks effective against all types, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, uh, tech excluded, to tech key spheres once only. So essentially, he will have the potential to hit super, super hard once he reaches his final transformation. As you can see, attack plus 30% per key sphere obtained is a massive, massive buff. And uh, he also has attacks effective against all types. So that combination right there is super, super deadly. And uh, of course, he's also an orb changer, which is great. And he also massively lowers the enemy's defense, which allows him to do even more damage to the enemy. So uh, he is quite monstrous in this form. But what I like about this unit is that you kind of have the option to go more defensive or offensive depending on whether or not you want to use that active skill, right? So if you decide to not use the active skill and just keep him in his Super Saiyan form, like the non-powered up form, I guess, then he's going to be stacking defense infinitely. He's going to be really, really tanky. Whereas if you want to go for like all out damage with a little bit of defense, he does still get 10% defense per key sphere obtained. Then you will use the active skill. Uh, see that beautiful transformation animation and uh, have him in this form where he is just a absolutely just a monster like I said so um, yeah that is the unit right there he is really really good guys like there's not um, much else, else I can say about him at this point he is just a really really freaking good unit amazing leader I can run a lot of different teams with him because he's not just future saga he's also all super types and uh, key plus 3 HP attack and defense plus 120% is not a small buff still that is the trunks right there now let's move on to the Zamasu who I still think is extremely good I don't think he's as good as the trunks overall but I do think he's still a very very good unit his name is true power of a god it's a masu and he is a realm of gods category leader key plus 3 HP and attack plus 170% and defense plus 130% so this is the first new realm of gods leader um, we're getting since UI Goku came out like two years ago I think I think it's been two years, yeah, so um, definitely been wanting one for a long time, we're finally getting one, and he's also an extreme class uh, leader as well, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 120%, so just like Trunks, you can build some very, very versatile teams with him, since he's not just a Realm of Gods leader, but you can also throw basically any extreme unit, not all of them are going to fit properly of course, um, but there are some really good like extreme units you could run on his team that aren't in the Realm of Gods category, so I absolutely love that about these two units. And his super attack is Heavenly Arrow, causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. Passive is Indignation, attack plus 100%, reduces damage received by 40%, recovers 7% HP when HP is 70% or less, and performs Patara Fusion when conditions are met. So he reduces damage, he gets some attack, and he also is a pretty decent healer. Of course he gets better over time as he goes through the transformations, but that is his initial form. And he performs Patara Fusion starting from the third turn from the start of battle, just like Trunks. And his links are power bestowed by God, Cold Judgment, Prodigies, Godly Power, Dismal Future, Fear and Faith, and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Realm of Gods, Patara, Future Saga, uh, Transformation Boost, and Time Travelers. Alright, so after the third turn, he will become Fusion Zamasu. And his super attack is now Lightning of Absolution, immense damage, and greatly lowers defense. Key plus 2, an attack plus 120%, reduces damage received by 40%, and recovers 10% HP when HP is 80% or less. So damage reduction stays the same, he gets more attack, he gets some key, and he also recovers more HP uh, earlier too. So pretty nice upgrade right there. And active skill is Monstrous God, mutates, can be activated upon entering next attacking turn once only, and his links that change are Nightmare, Fuse Fighter, and Big Bad Bosses. So that is the Fusion Zamasu right there, and then his final form is Mutated Fusion Zamasu, or uh, what was the... What was the name before they gave him? Like Deformed or something like that? So you can call it whatever you want, Deformed, Mutated, but this is what he looks like. 
and he now gets Divine Hammer, causes immense damage and massively lowers defense, which is an 80% uh, debuff to the enemy's defense for three turns. And he also gets a ridiculous passive buff of key plus four and attack plus 280%, guys. 280%. No defense, but he does still reduce damage received by 20%. So uh, that actually decreases a bit because I think they're trying to, you know, balance out the <laughs> crazy attack buff with a slightly lower, um, slightly less defense essentially. And disables enemy's guard. Superclass allies attack minus 10%. Um, which, you know, if you're running some superclass allies, that's obviously not a good thing. But if you're running a full extreme team, which in a lot of cases, that's probably the best thing to do with him, then this doesn't really matter. And uh, I believe everything else is the same. So, um, essentially with this Zamasu, he just hits like really, really freaking hard. Um, and it's not as contingent on like how many orbs you're getting or anything like that because with the trunks once he gets to his final transformation um, He's a little bit more reliant on like you setting things up for him um, He does like change orbs, but I think that's only one time right hold on I think he only changes orbs one yeah once only yeah, so he only changes the orbs once only so um, otherwise, if you're not getting a lot of orbs for him, then he's not going to be hitting like super hard. He's still going to be hitting decently hard, but not super hard. Whereas this guy is getting 280% attack unconditional. So he's going to be hitting hard like all the time. And he also does still tank a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a great tank, um, but 20% damage reduction is not nothing. And he disables the enemy's guard, which makes him hit even harder. And he also massively lowers the enemy's defense, which also allows him to hit even harder. So he just does a lot of freaking damage, guys. And uh, that's why I say both these guys are really good. I think, honestly, with the trunks though, because you have the option to um, stack infinite defense and attack uh, on his second form, I think he is better for that reason, but uh, they're both really, just really amazing units, so you can't really go wrong with pulling either of them. And now we're gonna move on to the banners because I feel like I spent a lot of time talking about these units. Uh, banners themselves are both really good, at least based on the JP um, iterations. And I I'm gonna say like there's a 99% chance that we're getting the exact same banners as JP got for this celebration on global. So I would expect these units. And as you can see, it's not too shabby, man. We got the tech trunks himself, we got AGL Gogeta, we got physical future Gohan who I know is not that hyped to a lot of people but he's still like not a bad unit by any means. Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, Tech Vegito Blue. This trunks is trash and this guy is not like as amazing as he used to be. He's still like not bad but um, these two guys obviously are very old units but both of them are going to get Extreme Z Awakenings at some point guys. So if you're missing them or you're missing dupes then pulling them wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, man, because um, both these guys with their Extreme Z Awakenings, I can tell you, are going to be amazing units. I don't even know what their EZAs are going to be, but I, I know they're going to be good, man, just based on the recent EZAs we got, right? Like the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, um, obviously for the 70% leads, like the Omega Shenron, and uh, the Fizz Broly, and so on and so forth. They're all amazing, amazing units once they get their EZAs. So I expect the same thing for these guys. And uh, the rest of the banner is really good. Obviously, it's been a little bit devalued. Um, it's, it's just a little bit less hype because of the 300 million download celebration with the Gohan and Cell banners since we had a lot of these guys on those banners. But still, if you guys are missing dupes, it's still a very good banner with very good units, right? So uh, Trunks banner is very good and I think the Zamasu banner is honestly even better because it has um, AGL Turles and STR Rose and in Goku Black who I think before the legendary Goku event came to global was probably like a little bit less you know hype a little bit less basically a little bit underrated right but once uh, we got that event and this guy being a monster at that event I think a lot of people are now a lot higher on him so uh, that's pretty exciting and for me personally that's exciting too because I don't have a single copy of him so, I mean, obviously there's Broly too, who is just ridiculously good. And then we have Zamasu. So, um, yeah, just as good, if not a better banner than Trunks is. I think it's better for me personally, but how good a banner is for 
anyone is kind of contingent on like what they have in their box what they're missing and stuff like that right so for me personally this is a better banner uh, some people might like the trunks banner better but either way they're both great banners and uh, of course this uh, Texamasu and this AGL Rosé are both pretty old both pretty good units still by the way but both really old but just like the Trunks and uh, Vegito Blue from the previous banner, they're both going to get easy A's and they're both going to be amazing, amazing easy A's. So not too bad if you, if you can pull dupes of them that you need. And um, there is one thing to keep in mind, guys. One difference uh, with the celebration that uh, JP, from JP, that JP didn't have. And it's a it's a big deal it's a, it's a game changer and what i'm talking about is the super dokkan fest ticket and the extreme dokkan fest ticket so if you guys have been logging in every day and doing the daily missions you should have five of each of these tickets already for free but in addition to that both of these banners when you do multis on them will be giving you additional tickets they can do summons on the associated ticket banner as well right and that is just such a big deal like you guys have I mean, if you're if you're an older player, you probably know. But if you're a newer player, you have no idea how valuable and just how insane getting tickets for doing summons is. Like it's it's amazing, man. It's the only thing that Global has over JP that um, will make JP players jealous. You know, so because <laughs> no one on JP is missing out on like the Pilafs trope or anything like that, right? But this, the tickets for these dual Dokkan fests is ours it's a global exclusive thing and it's just absolutely awesome so at the very least everybody should at least do like the first round of multis because the first round of multis most likely is going to have additional discounts so not just the three plus one but the first couple multis are probably going to be like extra discounts of like 30 per multi like 30 35 40 something like that and then the free multi and along the way you are going to be getting tickets as well so um, at the very least, do one round on each of the banners because I just think it's the value is totally, totally there. It's totally worth it. So there's the tickets. Awesome, awesome feature that these banners are gonna have. And finally, before we end off, let's uh, watch the animations for both these guys. So we're gonna start with the trunks here, and obviously shout out to DBZ World for posting these as always and making it easier for me to actually find these animations. So let's watch these together. I'm gonna shut up for a second, just be quiet, let you guys uh, take everything in and then we'll talk about it real quick after we're done watching, all right? So here we go, guys. I'm gonna be quiet in three, two, one, boom. Okay, so um, animations themselves, really, really good, but unfortunately, <laughs> all of that was ruined, not gonna lie, by the voice acting. I've heard some people say, this is actually my first time hearing it um, for myself. I've heard a lot of people tell me that the voice acting was really bad for Global, but yeah, it's bad. It's like really bad, man. It's... <laughs> That's, that's that's unfortunate but uh, as you can see the animations are really quality great animations i really enjoy them i just wish oh you know what we have the option of um setting it to the jp voices right i'm probably just gonna do that because th that that's just that's just not good that's gonna ruin the unit for me so <laughs> that's the trunks right there let's move on to the zamasu hopefully his english voice is better here we go
Might and justice strike me! Oh, weak God is capable of wiping out evil. It's worthless! Man, oh man. Okay. Um, <laughs> I gotta say, the JP voices for, uh, or the JP voice for Zamasu is not the greatest either. Um, I'm, I'm trying to not like come off as just like a hater, but I, I gotta be honest, guys. I, I don't like the voices for both Zamasu or Trunks. Uh, I think Zamasu is like marginally better than Trunks, but really, um, still pretty freaking bad. So, uh, the good thing is we do have the option, like I said, to set the voices to the Japanese, so if you guys pull these characters, definitely do that. Um, spare yourself the pain of having to listen to that. And if anybody likes the English voices, that's totally cool, you know, no hate, you know, to, to each their own, but uh, from a personal standpoint, personal perspective, uh, it's not good, it's not good. But animation-wise, both of them are very, very quality, amazing animations. Not on the same level, obviously, as like the cooler or anything like that, but um still like top tier animations no question so uh that's pretty much gonna do it for the video guys i think i already gave my recommendation but to re reiterate what i said um i think trunks is slightly better than the masu i think samasu's banner is slightly better than trunks's but i think they're both go worth going for they're both amazing units i'd say everybody at least do the first round of multis and then uh d depending on what happens from there then uh, you can, you know, make your own decision about whether or not to keep going, but I would say definitely do the first round of multis, like first four multis for each banner, that's 100% worth it. And then if you want to save for like something in the future, maybe uh, Christmas or the thank you celebration banner, like the, um, with the one with the LR Super Saiyan 4s and LR Gohan and Goten later on, or even like STR Cooler, like way down the line, that's totally your call, but everybody should do at least the first four multis per banner. Uh, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna spend at least like, you know what, <laughs> maybe like a thousand stones, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more depending on how things go, but nowhere near as crazy as I did for the 300 million download celebration because that was just a bad time and I don't want to repeat it again for this celebration, so... Um, depending on what happens, you know, I'll be spending a decent amount of stones, but uh, obviously that's me. I think for the average player, four multis per banner is pretty good, and going further, going deeper, especially if you're missing a lot of these units, is not a bad idea either, but definitely worth the summon. So that's my recommendation, and uh, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, hopefully you learned something from it, and I really hope it helped you guys make your decision about whether or not to summon, and that's going to do it, guys. Thank you Celebration, starting tonight. I'm super, super hyped for all of it. Expect a lot of content in the coming days. And as always, if you guys liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.